This podcast contains explicit content, language, and sexual situations. It is intended for adults 18 years of age and older. These thoughts and opinions expressed are not those of any specific employer, group, or individual. Fed up with the rat race, we decided to sell everything and move to Cancun, Mexico. Now we do what we love. Work, party, and play at the Desire Resorts. After 16 years in the lifestyle, we thought we saw it all. We were so wrong. So wrong. Oh my God, so wrong. Now we want to share the fun that we get to have every day. So come to room 77. Let's play. All right. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. It's so good to see you again. <laughs> I live here. Oh. <laughs> Wait, are you the lady in bed with me every night? This is true. Yes, this is a fact. This makes more sense now. Mm-hmm. It's all coming together. I just thought you lived close by. <laughs> I just showed up. How are you? I'm good. I'm fine. We have so much to talk about. I know. <laughs> There's the workshoppy stuff and the desire stuff and the temptation stuff. We went back to temptation mm-hmm. for a sequel. Oh, Long- God. It was in the making. It was months in the making. Yeah. Huge budget. <laughs> like like Game of Thrones budget. And a lot of people say it was just as good as the original, if not better. <laughs> I think it was better. Wound up having a pretty good time. Wound up running into people that were like desire. And there was one guy who was, he looked me dead in the eye. He was like, hey. And I looked back at him. I was like, hey. (laughs) And he looks at me. He goes, I'm a Patreon. (laughs) I'm like, get out of here. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Mark and Liz. And then he ran and went and got Liz. And Liz came down. She was sleeping. She had sleepy eyes because she was taking a nap. (laughs) No, we went up there because we were working with these two people with what is it my bikini addiction my bikini addiction is the hashtag or not the hashtag like their screen names but the actual website and the bikini line is just called bikini addiction bikini addiction yeah right but where do people go bikiniaddiction.com all right so we don't have an affiliate with this we don't make money uh, or do we have an affiliate with them yeah they're gonna give us some money but just not yet not yet yeah it's not set up yet right anyway really cool suits and We went up there to just shoot some photos, meet them officially. Mm -hmm. I don't know how we found them, but... They're podcast listeners. Oh, hi, guys. (laughs) That's how. Yeah, really great stuff. It's priced really great. And they made us a deal. They made us an offer we couldn't refuse. (laughs) It's awesome. I love it. What did they say? They support us. We're supporting them. So let's do free bikinis because everyone loves free stuff. So. Anyone who books through us five nights or more, temptation or desire, will get a free bikini and we'll give you a code and you can go to their website, you know, get the free bikini and hopefully buy some more. Yeah. Or you could just go there and buy bikinis if you want. Yeah. Uh, And they do everything like with measurements and stuff. Yeah. So they have like a regular line and then they also have a custom line and they have like this algorithm that works amazing because she made me some custom suits that we went to shoot in when we went up there. And I'm telling you, you measure like how much front coverage you want on the bottom, how low you want it, how... I mean, it was just awesome. So yeah. go look at the pictures. Yeah. Bikini Addiction. BikiniAddiction.com. And while you're at it, book through us. Do we have a uh, uh, also a discount code or no? Just put room 77 in the promo code. If it's set up, it'll give you a discount. Yeah. So we also had the workshop this week, which went swimmingly, mm-hmm. except for the one hot couple <laughs> that we literally forgot to rub. <laughs> sorry, hot couple. We love you. <laughs> We're sorry. It was an accident. <laughs> Please come back. <laughs> All right, so listen, just as a reminder, if you're going to book or you're thinking about booking, the cyber sale for Booking Desire is coming up. So it starts when? The Black Friday? Mm -hmm. For three days, you go to our website for the link and you get a super, super amazing deal. It's like the best deals of the entire year. Now, our website is the only website you can get the link. It is an exclusive... Right? Yeah. And uh, is it an accurate fact because I just said it in a microphone? That's how it works. So you Absolutely. Can, so you can only go to our website and get that link for Cyber Sale to get, I, I think they're giving away stuff for free, 100% off almost. If you round up, it's, yeah. We'll also be posting it on social media, so. I don't really know what we're talking about tonight. I mean, I have a few things that I wanted to go over. Yeah. Some flirting things. Now, we did a thing on flirting. It's in our vast... <laughs> <laughs> library library of videos on YouTube. If you go through our YouTube channel and you search through all, see how many is there? Four. <laughs> 
I don't know if they're alphabetical or not. I think the user can choose how they want to sort the videos. You're going to have to sort them on your own. Yeah. I, that's not my job. <laughs> so you're going to have to go through all four and figure out which one is flirting. So a lot of different things happened last week, right? Trying to do our thing, but trying to change up our flirting a little bit, right? Because it's different than, do you want to go back to your room? It's just a little bit different, right? Well, to be honest, I feel like it's, we've gotten lazy, no, I don't believe, I think it's harder. Oh, you do? Absolutely. Harder than meeting someone for drinks and having to flirt with them? Absolutely. Really? Yes. Oh. So you were taking people from a situation where their house is, their bar, their pool, their friends, their everything, their entire community in life is in that world, surrounded by a safety gate. And we're saying, hey, leave all of this and come with us. That's a tough sell. Yeah, I hear you. Whereas in the dating world, you're like, let's meet at a common area that is not mine, not yours, right? You yeah. don't live here, whatever. It's a common area. And then we go to location B, which is where the fun happens. <laughs> so it's it's just very different. But luckily, I think we've been doing pretty good for two people who are dipping their toes into human trafficking. <laughs> I feel like maybe I have a, a future in this kidnapping thing. <laughs> Yeah, that reminds me. So uh, we got a delivery. I'm going to try to not do this over the... Oh, my God. I can't open it. <laughs> oh, my God. Where did so this bad. come from? NASA? Yeah, it's like... To get the, the scissors. Here, do something. I can't. I have That's to get this open. Like. Oh, I got it. Okay. All right. You know what these are? I'll show you. Chloroform? No. I, that's coming. <laughs> okay. <But look. gasps> Leashes. Well, sort of. They're like restraints, right? Oh, nice. And they go... For yeah. The Bed. And they go under the bed so that when we do bring oh, the people, the cool. victims back, we just tie them up. This isn't really safe because we only have enough to tie up one person. And if we do couples, that's going to leave the other part of the couple to call or run for help. Can we get like a safety lock on the inside of our bedroom door or something? That's a really great idea. Maybe fingerprint only. Oh, double deadbolt. Or a retina scan. To stay in budget, double deadbolt. <laughs> Before we play, we swallow the key. Or you can suitcase it. Or we could put it in my butt. But that, I may need my butt. Yeah, this is true. You never know what's going to happen. Right. But I have have a bunch of different flirting styles. I can go from being on, like I'm doing a one-man show. (laughs) Yeah. Even like an audition sometimes. Sometimes I'm like, I'm talking to people or I'm talking to a couple, I'm flirting with them. And then I walk away and I'm like, nailed it. (laughs) I know I got that role. I know I got that part. And then it can go all the way to the other side to where I just... Look at someone and say, it was nice meeting you. Mm, Like you get nervous? Yeah, I get super nervous and I shut down. Yeah, I I have that too. And there's everything in between. All right, now here's an example of people who flirt really well, which is the Patreons who we kidnapped and brought back to the house Mm -hmm. that we played with. As soon as they started talking to us, so we met them at the pool. We're like, oh, you're you're the people, you're coming to the workshop. And as soon as I met them, I'm like, I want to have sex with these people. (laughs) As soon as I met them. Yeah. So then it just starts down a road of, but I don't know if it's going to be possible. But their flirting style was absolutely just right. Like just sweet, nice for us for that moment and for them. Not pushy, but definitely giving us a signal. We definitely knew they were interested up until the point where they they were voluntarily like, uh, we would like to be kidnapped. Yeah, exactly. Which is huge, right? Because it's very difficult to... Say to people, um, would you like to leave the resort? (laughs) Yeah, because they listened to the podcast. So they obviously knew we were like, hey, we're down with that. Had an amazing time with these people. So thank God that worked out, right? Because I just adored both of them. I liked being around them. I liked the flirting. I liked all that stuff. I was out there with him during girls camp. Uh And he had a bit of a social issue, like I do sometimes, when I was like, what is your deal in social environments? And he's like, I just get a little nervous in in groups, but it really, one-on-one, I get even more. Oh, really? No way. When we came back to the house and we were all sort of here playing, and you two were in the bathroom or something, and him and I were just on the bed talking naked, (laughs) and just laying down (laughs) naked. And I was like, oh, I don't want him to have any nervous anxiety right now. I I had a really good time with them. The only thing that I would change about them is when we were playing, they were soft swaps. So they weren't a full swap couple, which is fine. I don't even remember if I had sex with you, did I? I think I did for a little bit. Uh, You're welcome. And (laughs) So memorable. But he had started having sex with her, A, really fast. Yeah. And at a very rapid speed. So. (laughs) 
trying to hold his hips and I make know. him slow down. I'm like, so first, you, for me, anyway, they started way too early because I'm like, oh, I didn't know we were going to get there yet. Yeah. And then on top of that, he was doing it like a jackhammer. I'm like, <laughs> slow down, man. Rich would be passed out by this point. Are you trying to go back home? Do you want this to be over? over. <laughs> Just like fast forward the movie. Oh my God. Get to the so end. Funny. Just get to the cum shot and let's get out of here, honey. Yeah, but they, I had a really good time with them. Yeah. I feel like they did everything right. Like from the get up, they did everything right. Do you think they must have like a book or something? Well, they should write one. I think that that would be a good idea. I think that we should have kept them here. Now that we have those restraints, it's a possibility. That was a good purchase. Thank you. <laughs> Next, I'm buying a cage. <laughs> One of the things that I really liked about him was he was super empathetic, but also I was super empathetic. <laughs> so so he would come up to me and be like, if you guys want to do anything else tonight and don't want to have us back to your house, that's totally cool. And I'm like, oh, if you want to do anything else other than be with us, it is totally fine. Just tell me. <laughs> I don't know if you're trying to get out of this. He's like, I don't know if you're trying to get out of this. We are definitely not trying to get out of this. I'm like, I am definitely not trying to get out of this. And that moment I realized super empathetic becomes super pathetic really, really quickly. Yeah, two nices don't make a swing date, if no, that's a phrase. We were getting nowhere. We're, we're both really sweet people. That's how we first started to fall in love Yeah, of him and I. And they were actually with, they were hanging out with another really cute couple that were super attractive. I would have also kidnapped them too, but I didn't want to keep them away from them. Right. You don't want to be a cock blocker. We never want to do that. We're always backstepping and being like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm right. Gonna... They were like, no, 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 no. By the way, they, the other couple, uh-huh. they are exactly example of bad flirters, right? That's very true. Because they were not flirting that much in person. And then she started messaging me on Instagram. Yeah. What hey, was that about? I don't know. Come over here. Hey, yeah. lady. <laughs> Let me talk to you. I you, already left and took my shower. You come over here. <laughs> I can't beckon us back. We were already there. You yep. can't say come back here. Now you have to take a taxi. The only way you're going to impress me is mm. where can I find you, right? Yeah. That's a text to send. Send me a pin. You had me, lady. <laughs> now I'm gone and you're sad. That's your problem to deal with now. <laughs> Either way, I think I need... Uh, but, flirting? Yeah, I think so. I think I need help. So I'm curious, from your point of view, do you ever see me flirting? No. What do you mean? Well, no? you're not a very aggressive person. I encourage you actually to be more, be aggressive. But I have to flirt somehow. Yeah. Um, Let me narrow the question down because you're staring at a ceiling fan right now that is not going to give you the answer. I'm trying to think. I look up when I think. When you look over at me, what do you say? Oh my God, he's so adorable when he does that. But keep it contained to flirting otherwise the list will be way too well, long uh, I know what it is what you telling stories and telling jokes making people laugh is your way of flirting but it's a very distinct way that you do it because you do it and you sort of like wait for them to laugh and smile and then you smile back I like, do yeah that's sexy it's super <laughs> cute I love you so much all right what else do I do you rarely touch people but um I don't know. This is a hard one. I'm looking for you for improvement and you don't even know what I do. How would you say that I should improve my game? I'm asking you, hey. Well, you need to throw out more compliments. Like what? What's a good compliment to give a lady? Just like nice. Vagina? Uh, no. Nice labia. Yours. No. <laughs> oh, your labia looks so good. Can I put lipstick on your labia? I don't think most women like the term labia, to be honest. Moist. You seem very moist. <laughs> That's a particular person. <laughs> no, that's a lot of women hate the word moist. But it's on the front of a Duncan Hines box. Doesn't matter. All it I makes you sure want to do is eat brownies. Our listener right now, I'm sure, is cringing every time I say moist. I like the word moist. It means yummy You're to just, me. <laughs> there's so much wrong with I you. I know. It means yummy cake. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's one of the most disliked words, just so you know. Okay. Well, whatever. But welcome to society, honey. No. Oh, I like to live in my own world. I love okay. that. I love that you're in your own world. How do you see me improving? Decrease your personal space. Mm -hmm. You always keep a very appropriate amount of space, which is fine. It's mostly for the court order. <laughs> but in the flirting way, you need to 
in a circle, like make sure you're standing next to the woman or make a very little personal space. Yeah, I see that still sounds creepy to me. You know what I still get stuck in is hug, kiss. I still wind up, I don't know if I'm supposed to kiss on the cheek or not. And then sometimes I do. And then she recoils and I wind up kissing her earlobe. And it just gets awkward after Always that. Always go in for the lips and let the lady decide. I am not going in for the lips. No, let her decide. You didn't hit, let me finish. I did. How do I go? I'm telling you, as a woman, uh huh. the men always come at me <laughs> full frontal. <laughs> yes. This is horrible advice. No, and I decide whether, you know, do you look germy? I'm not taking this advice. No. This is horrible. I'm going to use my tongue. No, I'm gonna go just for, go I'm going in like, you don't have to pucker and close your eyes. What's like, the difference? It's like, then I'm just smushing my face up against her. Mm, 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 mm. Sorry, I just wanted to press my face up against you. I wasn't trying to kiss you. This is how I do it in my culture. We just press our faces up against one another. All right, give That's me, what the guys do, I'm telling you. Maybe I'm asking the wrong person for advice. All right, proximity. Do you see anything else that I could improve on? Okay. So maybe when you just stand in there, just throw an arm on her shoulder. I'm always touching somebody. So maybe I'm not the best person to ask. Well, no, I'm saying from you're different though. You're di- you have different stuff that you have to do than I have to do. I can't just throw a fucking arm on people. Yeah. Sorry. The rules are different for guys. No, they're not. Yeah, they are. A lot of the guys, if you've already like talked talking, to them and stuff. I'm, no, like initial while you're, meet. Oh, you no, go I'm talking straight. about initial meet. Okay, so initial meet, that wasn't clear for me. Okay. Yeah, you just go in for the big hug. What else? Do, um, I, br- do I bring them a small gift? No. Be charming. Done. Very. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. <laughs> Check that box every day. I can't not. What else? Ask her a bunch of questions. Where are you from? Who sent you? <laughs> She's not going well. What is your maiden name? Four what is your years. business here? <laughs> Last four of your social. <laughs> oh my God, this is really not going anywhere. <laughs> you suck it. Did you ever watch me? Are we together at all ever? <laughs> yeah, you just, it's just hard because people approach you and you. What are you know, talking about? I, I approach people all the time. Yeah. Hi, what's your name? Beautiful eyes, sometimes I say. And then they, what do they do? Thank you, usually. Oh my God. I don't even know if I can describe how I flirt like. I can describe how you flirt. On the very first initial meet. Of course, meet. I'm your husband. Okay, tell me. I've been with you I for 17 fucking years. I don't know, because maybe I'm just unaware of it. Oh God. <sighs> well, first of all, Sometimes you don't even know you're flirting. That's what I'm saying. So if I don't know what I'm doing, how am I supposed to know what you're doing? But sometimes you absolutely know that you're flirting. Mm, Tell me more. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So you do a thing where you'll tease them with a dry sense of humor. You will usually take the piss out of them. And usually it's combined with an arm around them or climbing on them, literally climbing them sometimes like a statue. Mm -hmm. It's a giveaway for you. It's one of my tells. Yeah, it's Mm -hmm. one of your tells if you start climbing someone like a pole. (laughs) Hey, Jeff, can I climb you? (laughs) That's one. Um, Right. But your flirting comes a lot through touch, usually more than words. Do you not agree with that? No, I do. I'm just, um, that's like not on an initial meet. I'm trying to put it in that initial meet sort of scenario like i don't just go up to jeff and put my arm around him and say yes you do i do yeah i mean you don't have a lot of boundaries especially when you meet people well depending on their demeanor but if they're accepting of it then you're usually right in there you get very flirty and very sarcastic very very quickly so sarcasm and touch yeah touching with a bit of smart ass is sort of your game Okay, and if we weren't in a pool, do I still touch people? Uh, yeah, you, yeah, you always touch people. You touch <laughs> people a little too much. I just say I'm from the South. That's how it is down there. You touchy. That's what I used to say <laughs> on the subway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that your charm is, is the sarcasm too, but I don't know what you could do to make it better. Well, it's I need a- someone to tell me. It's not going to be you. No. Here I-, I am looking for advice. And you're just failing me. Laugh more. That's hard for me. 
I don't have a good laugh. I don't either. Are you out of your mind? No, it's obnoxious. That's why people like it. I think someone actually found us at Temptation because of my laugh. That is actually true. No, I need a good laugh. Like, I need to come up with a good ho, ho, ho. <laughs> don't do that. That one's taken. That's taken? Yeah. <laughs> it might be trademarked. I'm might not be, sure. I think it'd be good, though. People wouldn't be like, oh, that's Richard. That's not natural. All right. He, he, he. <laughs> It's just a, it's a, it's a variation <laughs> mm-hmm. of the ho, ho, ho. What about this one? Ho, 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 Jiminy Crickets. <laughs> I would like to have like a hearty laugh. Like I'm, You do have a natural laugh. Uh, I don't. I laugh silently. Like, yeah, that's if I could have I mean. anybody's laugh, it would be Bill Hader's laugh. He just laughs with every part of his being. Yeah. Like Ricky Gervais gets you laughing because he laughs so hard, Mm -hmm. right? I wish I had that in me. Uh, I'm going to change. I'm going to change today. (laughs) 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 Oh, Jiminy Crickets. (laughs) (laughs) See, this is my laugh. I know. That's why I love it. It's just breath. It's just. It's it's nothing. (laughs) It's so stupid. You get tickled. It sounds like I'm I'm, I'm hyperventilating. (laughs) It sounds like you need more cardio. Yes, it does. It's barely a laugh. Maybe if you up your cardio, maybe a laugh will come naturally. Upping my cardio. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, too many crickets. That's funny. (laughs) I need help. If anybody wants to help me out with flirting, my wife doesn't know me. So (laughs) I got to ask somebody else. I'm going to have to take outside advice. (laughs) Someone could observe me for 24 to 48 hours <laughs> and then advise me. That would be great. I think you do great. I, I would just, if I had to give you advice, I would say be more aggressive. Sometimes you are oblivious to people flirting with you, like a really, really nice looking couple that's really sweet that we could do something with. They're like, so do you guys have plans tonight? And you're like, I don't know. I'm just going to sit home and <laughs> shave my vagina. I don't know. And go to bed, call it a night early. <laughs> nope. I'm like, what the fuck, lady? Hey, wife, you that, do that all the time. I know. I'm so black I and pulled white. You, I pulled you aside. I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you not flirting with these people? You're like, are they flirting? He just said he loves your vagina. I don't know. I got some emails to return. <laughs> hey, we, we emails can wait. You fucking asshole. Can you work this, please? <laughs> What room are you in? 30. What room are you in? 45. What room are you in? 71. What room are you in? 80. What room are you in? 80. Oh, same people. (laughs) Would you consider yourself a good flirter? No. Would you consider your wife a good flirter? Absolutely not. You're both bad flirters. (laughs) So for your wife, what could you, what could she work on flirting wise? She could just talk. Just talk. (laughs) It's a great start. Would you consider yourselves good flirters or bad flirters? Uh, I think we're horrible. Yes. <laughs> have you met these folks? Yeah. Uh, we have. Who here considers themselves a pretty good flirter? Yeah? You're a good flirter? I think so. What do you think your best flirting quality is? Because I'm outgoing and bubbly. Bubbly. So do you like to make people laugh? I'm not funny, though. I think you're hilarious. <laughs> is your husband a good flirter? Yes. What is his best flirting quality? The fact that he's hot. Do you flirt well? No. What would you say she can work on? Being more outgoing. Talking Be to more. People. Do you guys flirt well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah? yeah. Do you have a signature flirting move that you go to? Like, what uh, is your thing? Like, I try to make people laugh. Yes, yeah, so I like I like to kind of be the, being the clown. Does he have any weaknesses? He can, he can sometimes talk a little bit too much. And... When you are flirted with, what is your favorite way to be flirted with? I think, like you said, compliments. Compliments. And a little bit, of, a little touch. Like this. That's the my back. Yeah. right there. Yeah. That's it. Right Just there. Above her. How long do we have to know each other before I, <laughs> before I start doing this? Do you think he's a good flirter? He doesn't what? even know he's doing it. Right. <laughs> what is his most charming quality when he's flirting? He invites people back a lot. His best flirting is that he invites people back to the room. <laughs> Eye contact and compliments. And a key to your room. That's right. (laughs) When someone's flirting with you. There's contact, they put it. Like you like when people touch you. Yeah. You meet my wife. (laughs) Humor. Humor. That's all it takes. How about you guys? And uh, inviting. Uh, They'll invite you to the room. (laughs) Smiles are inviting. (laughs) Yes. Look, they're giving you a key. All right, Dr. Jeff, Dr. Karen. 
How are you guys? We're great. Yeah, we're doing great. We miss you guys. It's been a long time. We didn't get to see you last time you were here. We always miss you. Is that true? Did we not see you when we were there last? I don't think that's true. No, that was absolutely true. You scheduled it so that you wouldn't see us. And, <laughs> and in the interim, because you weren't there, doctor, Lauren passed. <laughs> Uh, well, I feel really bad about that, but I don't think that's accurate. No, we didn't see. Them. Oh, that's we right. We saw friends yeah. of yours. We you guys were, yeah, you were recluses. No, you just didn't care about us. <laughs> <laughs> Let's fight about it. You just couldn't make it up there during your days. I would just say schedule better. We're coming again in November. What time in November? Uh, November 11th is the start. Oh, we're not going to be there that day. We're not, we're not there. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Now we'll be there. I think we'll be there, right? I thought we were going to totes hang out. We have revealed that we are not allowed to fraternize. Fraternize? Yeah. Fraternize? Fraternize. Fraternize. That's the Texas way. With say. the people. We cannot stick anything inside of you, I think. I think that's the rule. Or receive a stick. Right. So um, we are going to try to kidnap you at some point for a block of time. And I don't care if you're happy about that or unhappy about that. We just need to make it happen. I say yes. You can dance on our roof. Yay. We will <laughs> fraternize all the way over to your place. Dr. Karen, would you do that for me? Um, yes. Dr. Jeff? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we we All very right. much enjoy our time with you. That we were distressed to hear that you're not going to be at the resort or as actively as you had been in the past. We like to be active. Right. <laughs> I'll be waiting for that. We still need to put your penis doc inside of Lauren's anus. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> this is still waiting. How has Project Airtight not actually happened <laughs> yet? I don't know. <laughs> Well, I told you, we're, now we're just project open all the time. It's not airtight at all. It's project leaky. <laughs> Lauren is always leaking. She's always not tight. Wow. I don't, I don't know how to deal with this. <laughs> the, the, the Dr. Karen had a good suggestion on how to work out project airtight with just the four of us. It involved a strap on. We're going to do it. We're doing it. Again, bring morphine. <laughs> <laughs> if you have some laying around, I tell you this all the time. Uh, if there's one thing that people talk about when they talk about the podcast, that Dr. Jeff, that couple, I want, I want to talk to that couple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. People have missed you, but in that time, a lot of medical things have come up. The people need you, Dr. Jeff. They do. Yeah. All right. My first question, should I start with something sexy, honey? Yeah, All right. absolutely. Menopause. <laughs> <Ooh. Okay. laughs> That's sexy. We were in the pool with this wonderful lady and she started having a hot flash, almost similar to the hot flash I have when I take too much Viagra. <laughs> okay. And... I thought to myself, Doc, Lauren isn't getting any younger, right? This is obviously at some point going to happen. Yeah. You're going to get symptoms. And is that a sign that life is moving on? Or is it a sign that I need to find a younger woman? Oh, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> that is a terrible question. <laughs> It may need a terrible answer. <laughs> it, it means that you are gracefully growing old together and that you need to embrace her changes as she is probably uh, embracing your changes. But what are the symptoms of menopause? Like what is, what can she look forward to? Is she going, to, is the first sign something like hot flashes? Does the vagina just dry up at that point and you have to hold like a holster with lube in it at all times? How does it work? I don't really know anything about menopause and I don't think a lot of other guys do either. It gets brought up a lot to the workshop or whatever and then people bring it up. They're like, oh yeah, I'm starting or I'm yeah. getting flashes. And I think what's really good though is that if if women are experiencing that, they it's good that they're talking about it. I think so many women feel so bad about it. And I mean, there's the, the upside in the sense that you stop menstruating, right? So that's nice. That is a bit period. of a pain, I would think. But that's kind of a nice thing that, that would you conclude that. Uh, certainly, your chance of getting pregnant uh, goes down pretty significantly. So <laughs> there's no worry about that. No comment. Condoms. That's well. Oh, I, don't, wait. <laughs> I don't think that's what you're. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Woo! Tampons and condoms are throwing everything out. 
<laughs> We're going rogue. What else do you get, Doc? There is usually at least some complaint of a little less lubrication, but even that's not necessarily, that's not a universal. Plenty of women still are fine with that. I think that more regular sexual activity actually increases the chance for more normal lubrication. So that's not as though that's a for sure thing either. Um, some women do, there's still a little controversy out about supplementing estrogen, which because you do become not deficient, but your estrogen levels drop. As that occurs, some of those, your natural libido and your natural response to sexual activity does does wane sometimes. But again, these are all variable things. I mean, some women remain very much in the same situation as uh, as they did prior to, um, to prior to menopause. They're very active. We see them every yeah, day. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't necessarily affect everyone in a negative way, and a lot of people find the you know the liberation from menstruation yeah menstruation and even just kind of the hormonal variability or the variation in their hormones throughout the you know the cycle from what i remember in medical school they're in withdrawal from estrogen is that true is that sort of what's happening sort of like a nicotine fit well yeah but i mean you remember that you you have a lot of variations in your level of estrogen throughout the normal cycle so the estrogen levels drop but they don't drop precipitously it's not as though now there isn't any until you go through that really like shocking withdrawal. I think it's just that the, the pattern just changes enough. I mean, your body has to get used to that, that kind of the new norm. Precipitously speaking, <laughs> is um, is it make the sensation any different on the inside? Because I've also had people ask me that. How would he know that? He doesn't have a vagina. He would know maybe if they, he learned it in school. <laughs> All right, Doc. Good luck with this one. Yeah. Does it feel any difference inside of your vagina, Dr. Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> or future future Dr. Jeff? Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I think we'd have to take a poll on that. I, I, I don't know the answer to that. We can do some research in November. I guess the point is, is anybody that is approaching menopause or anybody who is dealing with somebody who is going into menopause or menopause is on their mind, it's not the end of the road is what you're saying. No, I, I mean, absolutely not. I think that women tend to peak sexually later than men in general. Not like after <laughs> social security. <laughs> I don't think they mean that late. Woo! I think that there is a new kind of level of activity that people enjoy in their later years that is very different, but equally satisfying to what they enjoyed when they were in their 20s and 30s. Yeah, bareback sex. Menopause usually would occur in a woman ages 45 and 55. So my question is, how old in a woman is too old to be in the lifestyle? Mm, 90. <laughs> I don't know yeah. that menopause and the lifestyle necessarily would be correlated one with the other. I think that it would seem like you... I know. I know. You're right. But the, we have asked that question many times. Well, like, that's a separate question, which is the age cutoff? a topic at some point that I'm sure you guys would discuss, which is just what is the age cutoff for this lifestyle? Well, let me tell you, Dr. Jeff and Dr. Karen, that one of our first memories going to a swinger establishment in the lifestyle was we showed up at a place in California, which was sort of a resort, but not really. It had a pool. And we were there on like opening day. Yeah, it's like, yeah. One of the first things we saw was a couple, man and woman, and she was giving him a blowjob in the the pool he was sitting on the ledge and they both had oxygen masks on <laughs> oh my during gosh. wow yeah. yeah so don't be a quitter that's what <laughs> here go yeah they were in it to win it. <laughs> if the mo if the oxygen is mobile then you are still in the lifestyle <laughs> that's true okay and yeah i i don't know if there's a cutoff i think mentally you can always be in the lifestyle in some capacity even if you're not sexually active right that's my opinion. I don't know if everybody shares that with me. Keep the fantasy alive. Yeah. You're right. You know? Whatever. You're right. Dr. Karen, this one's for you. Ooh. Well, here's one thing that I struggle with mentally. A lot of things, but here's one thing that I struggle with. I can make Lauren come easier and more efficiently with a finger than my penis. So are there different <laughs> types of orgasms with things in your particular vagina that make you orgasm differently? Do you like orgasming with a finger or a penis or a vibrator? I would have to say that I agree with Lauren. The fingering is a really wonderful sensation. 
sensation. I love that. This makes me feel better about my penis size. <laughs> I because told then I you say, this a long time ago. Yeah, but I, but I your can't. Your penis size is fine. Like, I don't know what your problem yeah, is. Yeah, but I been. can't. If I could, if my penis could move like a finger, right. I'd be awesome. Oh, man. Well, don't say it like that. I mean, that would be crazy. You like the figure? Yes, definitely. The movement, the, the manipulation, that's way better. Sorry. <laughs> it is. It's so awesome. <laughs> Lauren finds me very manipulative. <laughs> um, all right. Here's a question that I have for Dr. Jeff. The other night, I was having sex with Lauren, and I came. Now, it didn't really look like I was <laughs> coming. It looked more like my penis shed a tear, right? <laughs> It just looked sad. Now, this is my question. It's about ejaculate. Because if you could get a picture in your head, what I want to happen is, you've been to the Desire Foam Party, right? <laughs> yes. So instead of that foam machine, I want you to picture me standing there, coming all over everyone. Ooh. Like a snake. That, that is the closest visual that I could give you. So my question is, oh my God. how do I get more ejaculate, Doc? I want more ejaculate. This is honest. I'm not even making this part up. It was so sad when I came on her stomach. I almost spit on her. <laughs> Add to it. Give it some volume. So that she would feel just a little bit of liquid. Yeah, a little bit more. On like her body. To mix it in. <laughs> yeah. So you can spread her I'm, out. <laughs> I had the thought, should I spit a little bit? Just to add to it. Give it yeah. oh, because I'm just ashamed of myself right <laughs> yeah. now. So, so there's... Unfortunately, there is no real way to increase that volume other than you got to remember what, mm. what makes up the volume is fairly straightforward. So you really don't have, if you're thinking about like the amount of sperm, right? So that's a very, very small amount. So whether you've had a, yeah. if you've had a, um, a vasectomy, yes, if you've had a vasectomy, it. you certainly, it would not change your volume really at all. Some people think that that does, but it actually changes it very, very little because only about 2% of the actual volume comes from sperm, right? Yeah, so, what's the liquid? Yeah, so most of the liquid comes from three different sources, right? So you've got your seminal vesicles, right? So that actually- Of course. So there, there are these, they kind of contribute, think of it like the nutrients for the sperm. That's kind of where you get that very, very trace amount of protein, that trace amount of fructose, that trace amount of- oh, <laughs> Fructose is sugar. Sugar. Wow. Yeah. It sounds delicious. <laughs> that's a probably that's probably like 30% of it comes from that. Then the prostate also contributes, right? So you've got some prosthetic fluid and think of that a little bit more like the volume for kind of a lubrication. You'll get a little of that kind of that gives it a little bit more of its um slipperiness. Yes. Emptiness. So that's probably right. the area where you're starting to de diminish the amount if you're either ejaculating a lot or just with general age, you just don't contribute as much from the prostate. And then your right. global urethral, you've got a small gland that just contributes just a touch of, again, it's kind of the, it allows the, the, the ejaculate to kind of easily glide through. And certainly all of it will diminish if you're having sex a lot. Well, I don't have sex a lot. I just don't have enough fluid to like, did you ever see the bottom of a water slide? when you land at the bottom <laughs> yeah or like a log flume right, right? You want to write end. your name. Yeah. You want like, to be I, like creating things. Hey. So that's a good question. I don't, I'm not sure that there's anything you can do that's going to increase that volume. But why do some guys look like they're putting out a fire with a fire extinguisher? I mean, they just like they're spraying it all over the place. Yeah. It seems like sometimes people spray also different colors. I've never seen that before. Well, in my I life. mean, like, you know, different thicknesses. Yeah. And then some people spray far. Mm -hmm. Is that the prostate, like the strength of the prostate when you can go for distance? So what you'll find, I mean, again, I, I think it has to do with each kind of different scenario. Sometimes when you have had an erection for a long time and have not been mm -hmm. able to come, what you're doing is the prostate continues to kind of secrete into that area and so you're going to increase your volume because during that whole time, you're getting some secretions from both the seminal vesicles as well as the prostate. And so it may well be that if you've had an erection for a while and then at the final conclusion, you might shoot further and you might shoot a higher volume. How many grams of protein per ounce of 
lives come? Oh, that's a good question. Well, the answer to that is very, very little. So there's always this kind of like urban. I'm I'm on a high protein diet. No, no. You'll have less than a calorie even with I don't care, Dr. Karen. If we're stuck in the woods and you're starving, I am going (laughs) to feed you my my cake batter. (laughs) Oh, good. At least I'll know I'll get some fructose. Yes. All right. So there's nothing I can do. I'm just going to have to start spitting on my wife. (laughs) That's actually sad news for me. Well, you can just get an erection. We'll have lingam class, right? We'll just keep you hard until it's like five hours later, we have sex at home. I mean, that's that'll work, right? You kind of edge him out and then you're ready to go. Later, it will be quite, it'll be much more voluminous. <laughs> it sounds like you're talking about a Pantene shampoo. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. It's another visual I'd like. <laughs> Spray my bottle all over you and then do your hair. Like my hair, Ralph. And then straight iron that shit. Put some falsies on you. Go out for the night. (laughs) All right. What room are you in? 41. What room are you in? 3. What room are you in? 70. What room are you in? 85. This is going to be for a guy. Who am I going to choose here? A few. Yes? All right. My friend, to you as a guy, what is the perfect volume of cum? Like a shot glass size? Oh, three shot glasses. Three shot glass size. How much cum would you say is the right amount of cum to come out of you? Uh, probably about a half a cup. A half a cup. How about you, sir? A tablespoon. A tablespoon? How much cum would you like to see come out of your body? Enough to cover my wife's ass. That is a good answer. answer. All right, here's my question for the ladies. When he comes on you and it feels like a raindrop or like he spilled a warm pina colada all over your body? A raindrop. A raindrop? Raindrop or pina colada? I can't go somewhere in the middle? No, those are the choices. Pina Pina colada. What about you? A raindrop. Pina colada or raindrop? Pina colada. Pina colada. What about you? Pina colada. How about you, you dirty, filthy woman? (laughs) Pina colada or raindrop? Oh, pina colada. And what would you say the perfect amount of cum is? All of it. All of the cum that you have. Do you wish that your man would come like the foam machine? (laughs) That's a little excessive. (laughs) Do you wish you could come like the foam machine? I thought I did. Do you know what the first signs of menopause are? Name one. Hot flashes. Hot flashes. Name a sign of menopause. Drying out. Drying out. Do you know any signs of menopause? Are you scared of it? I hate it. You do? Yeah. Just as a concept? No, going through it. Are you going through menopause now? Sort of, kind of. Can you tell this man over here (laughs) that you don't, in fact, dry up after menopause? Yeah, I've had no drying up. Do you know that you don't dry up after menopause? No, you spontaneously combust. Are you aware of what menopause does to a woman's body? No. Are you aware of what menopause does? Loss of estrogen. Way to be really scientific, but like... Do you know anything about menopause or did you know anything about menopause ever in your life? Yes. You do? Yes. I I sit next to a woman at work who's always having hot flashes. Okay. Like mood swings? Is that something? In case I've been in menopause since 32. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Lauren, here we are back in the saddle at the house with nobody here to sex with. No one to saddle with. I don't know how to deal with this as I need to start making a list and we start bringing people in by list. So start booking people, (laughs) some sort of booking system. That's what we need. Add it to the website. I don't want to be alone tonight. I mean, you're here. That's great. (laughs) But I don't want to be alone tonight. I'd like to have some weird sex. Yeah. Last week at the resort, I'm going back Thursday, Friday, because quite honestly, before Thursday, I've already purged and forgot. (laughs) It's sad, but it's true. I don't even remember. I'm just going Thursday and Friday. The workshop at RM, I don't know what's happening. I mean, it's not going to last forever, but (laughs) I God bless them. I want to figure it out. We're going to look back on this and be like, remember that time at RM when we would show up for the workshop at a half an hour or even more before it started? And it was already full. Yeah. I, I don't understand. So, and today, even again. Again. This isn't going to last forever. This is <laughs> something weird is happening in the air. <laughs> but that workshop on Thursday, the only thing I remember, it was a great workshop. Right. But there was one guy that came into that workshop and he stripped down and then she stripped down. I looked over and he was still wearing his black socks. <laughs> they had to be black. They're black socks. <laughs> so he's completely naked, laying there like 20 minutes before. 
just waiting like i'm ready i'm ready and I, in my mind i'm like no you're not no you're not and every time i kept walking by you i kept going i would be like hey honey did you did you get the sign for the thing his socks are still on <laughs> completely yeah. naked everybody completely naked yeah, complete. like what do you do i don't know you just keep walking by going socks are still on <laughs> And he left his socks on the entire workshop. Like they never came off. And I could not not just look at his socks. Someone has never, ever, it's never just left their socks on. Just socks. And not really a sexy thing. I get upset at guys in porn. Yeah, I know. This is what I was going to say. When they leave their socks on in porn. I'll just, I turn it off. I'm yeah. like, I can't. I'm not watching. That dude's not taking his socks off. Fuck it this. It really bothers you. Yeah. If I was a dirt, I'd be like, cut, dude. <laughs> Take the socks off. I think we've seen a hat before. We've seen shorts before. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people wear bottoms. bottoms. Even yeah, full wanna... full b- bikini. Some some people are, yeah. are, are shy. Never just socks. It was such a great choice. I don't think it was a choice. <laughs> I mean, literally, the only thing better would have been one sock. <laughs> That's the only thing that would have been better. Thursday when we were at RN, I was very horny in that pool. Sun was out, beautiful, nice warm day. Mm. Pool was a little chilly. All day I was sort of horned up, right? Uh-huh. And I just wanted some sort of sexy stuff to happen. Nothing was happening. And uh, I was talking to somebody. You were sort of behind me. And somebody was sitting on the ledge getting a hand job or something. I, I, I would like to partake in that. Yeah. Right? Always. And you went over there and you were like, oh, I'm going to go watch and just hang out with these people. Hey, which, by the way, is not fair. I recognized the couple that was sitting next to them. And I was like, hey, you guys going to the workshop? Don't mind me. I'm just going to watch you jack him off. I thought you were going to come over. I didn't partake in any of it. <laughs> it always takes one person to sort of get everybody. Get, once it gets going. Oh, and people like it, yeah, right? Yeah. I would do it. I would feel more comfortable if people were just doing public display of affectiony stuff. Yeah. So why don't you ever grab me and just do stuff? Why don't you just start yanking me off? Um, well, you have to get up out of the water and do stuff. That's me doing something. Why don't you say, hey, get up here? If PDA is hard for me, you know that. Like, I'm not super exhibition-y. I've gotten better, that's for sure. Yeah. But everybody wants to see it. Yeah. I just am, deep down inside, I'm really shy. And I kind of enjoy the veil of darkness. If it's dark, I'm much more adventurous. When it's just you and me, it's different. But I feel like... I feel like people are watching. They are watching. Yeah. That's that's the whole thing about being an exhibitionist. (laughs) I know, but you know what I mean? Like, what are Richard and Lauren doing instead of just those people? So given our current situation, sometimes there are more eyes on us at any given time. Because we're the workshop people. Yeah, we're the workshop people. I'm sure it would be the same thing if Julio, the bartender, started <laughs> jacking off. They'd be like, why? Everybody's staring at Julio. Why? Because, I don't know, he works here and he just pulled his cock out. <laughs> it's a bit awkward. Right. Yeah. yeah, I get that. I try to throw all that stuff away and I still just want to do it. I just want the people to be more open to just doing stuff. I I don't know how to start it myself. As a man, I feel like you have to start it. Just like that lady did with her husband. She's got the right attitude. She find that lady. (laughs) Talk to her. Yeah, she could teach me a few tricks. Yeah, I just, I don't know what that block is for me. I I don't know if it's, I get distracted. It's not like it's not on my mind. I think people, not all people, but I think people enjoy public displays of affection, right? Yeah, I find it funny because when we, especially at RM, because the way the beds are supposed are situated there the circle beds are really close to the walkway right you kind of have to meander through we go to lunch a lot of the times people are you know doing sex stuff on the beds and when you walk by them they kind of stop yeah and every once in a while they'll get that person that's like "Uh uh-huh Huh? Watch me, yeah. bitch. Yeah, Slow exactly. down that walk. Right. But it doesn't happen as often as you would think. Why are you jogging, lady? <laughs> jogging. Stop and smell the roses. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. I mean, it's like the exact opposite of what a vanilla person that is afraid to go to the resort thinks. It's like you think that sex is happening everywhere, but it's really not happening everywhere. But when it does happen, you're like, yay, sex stuff is happening. <laughs> you're doing stuff. I enjoy being sort of exhibitionist Exhibitionist-y. Exhibition. <laughs> is he? Istic. Exhibitionistic. Yeah. I don't know. I should know this word. I'm in the lifestyle. <laughs> Public displays of affection. 
usually are hand jobs, blow jobs. Way underneath that is oral sex yeah. on women. You rarely see finger banging. Wow, he's really going to town on her <laughs> vagina right now with his fingers. <laughs> F- and fucking like oral hand job fucking those are sort of the three things yeah when it comes to public display of affection yeah i'd like to see a woman come over and just sit on her husband's face <laughs> and, and <laughs> it's, it's oral time it's oral time and i'm ordering nachos <laughs> oh god no bring me nachos while my husband eats me out no when I opened our resort coming in 2020, never, uh-huh. the side of my pool is going to have cushions. Like, <gasps> yeah, like so water. Great. Yeah, waterproof. So when you jump up, the whole side is padded. Nice. Oh. That is a nice touch. Yeah, I. that's my only idea. <laughs> that's and solid, gonna, though. Yeah, but I'm going to tell the architect that. <laughs> and design the rest around it. And we also need plumbing and electric. <laughs> I often wonder like during the day or at night or wherever it is are there more people that want to do it that don't do it i just think it's the getting started part I why think can't it's, people just get started that's the hardest thing about the lifestyle but with each other though still i mean you are with a bunch of people yeah and- I, I guess once you start it feels like all eyes go on you it's like you feel that way like whether it's you or me or I don't, whatever It feels like, boom, all eyes are on you, Mm -hmm. right? But if you put yourself on the other side of that and you're having a conversation at the bar and there's somebody way across the way that's having sex or I'm not really paying them that much attention. I may glance over a few times. Yeah. But it's not nearly as focused as it is when you're doing it and you're like, everybody's staring right at me right now. There's like a hundred eyeballs on me right now. But it's not true. I feel that feeling at the very beginning, but but then I disappear. Yeah, but that's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm just trying to say that people feel that way. I think they feel stressed. I feel it too. Like, oh my God, everybody's looking at me. I don't know if everybody's really looking at you. Yeah. They're glancing. Yeah. I mean, but it's never, hard because the jacuzzi sometimes they- it's, But what about it, what about the pool? Pool, no. Hell no. Why? You've done it before. No, I'm saying no one, the pool is a much bigger body of water. <laughs> Compared, compared to, to a jac- fountain? <laughs> in the jacuzzi, sometimes it's like the telephone game. They're doing something. They're doing something. They're doing something. How long do they stay looking? Not very long. But you do feel that. Yeah. Yeah. Because it does happen. The pool, it doesn't happen. During the day at the pool, whether it's RM or Pearl. RM, it happens more. That's just because there's more day beds. Yeah. The pool's a little more conducive for it. Pearl is so spread out that if you want that exhibitionisty, I can't figure out that word. If you want it, it's hard to get it because it's so spread out. And it's only lounge chairs. Yeah, it's only lounge chairs. Yeah. There's no beds around there. Mm -mm. When I build my hotel, I'm going to have beds (laughs) and lounge chairs and a cushiony thing around the... Call the architect now. Okay. Just tell them those two things. Jim, what's our architect's name? Not Jim. Oh. Would you like more stuff to happen at the pool? Just in the background. Like right now, let's say there's one couple per hour that does something sexy. Uh Uh-huh. Would you like five couples per hour doing stuff? I think three to four might be nice. I think people should just be full out fucking by the pool. (laughs) I don't think uh, that's a, is it allowed? Yeah, of course it's allowed. I feel like people think it's not allowed. Yeah, it's allowed. <laughs> you can do it if you have big enough balls to do it. Yeah, that's. I think people would enjoy it. I've never heard anybody be like, oh, that <laughs> couple over there is having oral sex. <laughs> I just can't even. <laughs> never. Oh my God. That's never, ever happened. Nothing has even come close. No. Oh my God. That couple over there is just disgusting. He is fully erect (laughs) yeah it's weird i just don't know if if people feel like it's inappropriate maybe i'm completely inappropriate well that's what i'm thinking like maybe they feel not about the eyes but maybe it's that brain thing of this is not appropriate this is dirty not dirty but i think appropriate is the good is the right word But what is appropriate? Going 20 more feet to a bed? Because that's what they do. Yeah. Or I'm going to go to the beach bed. I'm going to do it on the beach because that's appropriate. It's not. It's just there's this stigma with doing it, doing stuff by the pool. I think people would enjoy it. I think that's one of the things people like about the workshop. We should do the workshop in the pool. (laughs) Is my mind like everybody else's? Like, uh, I think that there should be more of this public display of affection. Like, are there more women that are like you? I don't know. I think that women aren't as comfortable being the receiver. I think they're better givers in public. I am. 
I don't know why that is. Way too hard for us to relax. And, you know, it's not like you guys are much more tactile with your enjoyment. I don't think you really have to re- relax your mind a lot and be like, yeah, oh. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Don't be so sexist. If I were giving you a hand job and yeah. you were distracted, you'd still get hard. No, that's that. So honestly. Yes. Divor- no, divorce. This is. Wait a second. Hold on. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to teach you something. I'm going to learn you something that you don't even know. What do you have to say? Go. Well, if Wrong. I- <laughs> do you ever leave your socks on during sex? No, that's absolutely not. <laughs> do you think it's sexy when someone leaves their socks on during sex? No. If he was wearing socks before sex, what would you do? Make him take them off. Have you ever accidentally left them on? Never. Socks during sex, how do you feel about it? Oh, absolutely. We're from the Midwest. So, <laughs> you keep those socks it's warm. Cold. Yeah, you keep it cold. Socks during sex, how do you feel about it? Fine with me. How do you feel about public sex? Love it. You love it? <laughs> Have you been watching any while you were here? Yeah, a little bit. Have you had public sex? Have you had sex in front of people while you were here? Well, just then. <laughs> no, I mean like by the pool. No, we haven't. Are you planning on it? It'd be nice. So <laughs> Have you had public sex while you were here? Yes. What kind, what was the public sex act that you did? Uh, doggy style while he held my pigtails. Really? <laughs> so full on sexing? Yep. Do you like watching public sex here? Yeah, yeah, sure. Do you just glance or do you glare? Well, in my mind's eye, I'm glaring, but I'm trying to be like, oh, well, that's nice. Casual, <laughs> right? Casual, yes. Yeah, casual, yeah. Casual, yeah. Casual, yeah. right? Yeah. So you, you would say the proper etiquette would be what? When you see it happening? Uh, maybe just glance and then look away and pretend you're not interested yeah. right yeah pretty right. much yeah do you sometimes wait for someone to start before you start mm, usually like to be the instigator yeah you look like an instigator <laughs> thank you all so much we really really appreciate it yay All right, Lauren, that about does it for us. It's funny that we were talking about flirting in this one, and we were at the (laughs) pool in RM today, and we walked away from this couple, and you're like, "Uh, I think he's really, really hot. And then we went over to him again, and I was like, just be really careful. She may try to climb you later. And he's like, she already did climb me. (laughs) I did. I totally did. You are so predictable. Don't know. It's like overwhelms me. Uh huh. And I just am like, hi. And then I just. You climbed him like a tree. Yeah. And I just hold on. So awkward. Very exciting. Next week, the 17th and the 18th, we will be at Desire RM as guests, which means you can come over, you could say hello, and then fuck us with impunity. Woo! Yeah, because we will be guests there. So if you're over at Pearl and you want to come over, you want to say hi and go down on Lauren or me or whatever. Come on over. I may just lie on a bed with a sign that says, uh, this is the Please Touch Me Museum. (laughs) Museum. Oh, my God. It's so Yeah, it's just going to say, Please Touch Me Museum. I don't know what you're going to be doing during that time. I'm going to sell tickets, and then I'm going to turn around, and I'm going to receive the tickets Mm -hmm. also. You're a dirty usher. I I am. How much are you selling tickets for? It depends on what they want to do. Just touch me. How much is it to just touch me? $10. Bring that down to about 10 cents. Okay. Don't forget about the cyber sale. It starts on the 29th. Go to our website for the secret link. You get a free bikini and you get other stuff if you book through us. I have the link. I've had it in this briefcase that I've been carrying with me everywhere. Is it handcuffed to you? Like the nuclear code. So use that link. You can book Desire. You can book Temptation. You can book Cruise. You can book a few nights at our house here. Just <laughs> use the code Airtight BNB. <laughs> No. Oh my God, I will put it on Google Maps. That will get you here. Which states booked with us this month, Lauren, and or countries and or planets? So we got to hang out with people that were from Rhode Island, from Pennsylvania, Colorado, Missouri, Florida, Louisiana, Texas, California, and North Carolina. And then we got some international really? friends going on, UK, oh. and from Chiapas here oh, in Mexico. Really? Yeah. We're international. Worldwide, baby. Universal. <laughs> All right, so we also want to thank Bed Hoppers Podcast. They came by and had dinner with us. They gave me a shirt that I cannot wear in public. I could seriously listen to them talk and laugh. They have such a great point of view, and they really kept me laughing the whole dinner. It was well worth it. I just wanted to point out that I paid for dinner. You are a generous heart. It's not that it makes me a better person, but it kind of sort of does. <laughs> and also to New With Tags podcast, they came by 
lovely, lovely people. They gave us a lot of love and a lot of support. I mean, more than Bed Hoppers gave. Not that it's a contest. Speaking of people who did pay for us, who are our new lovely Patreon? So we want to give a shout out to Alan Libby, Sexy Second Half, Brittany Bitch, Jules, Crispy, H2O for raising their pledge along with Bella Moore, Todd and Chris, Ryan, and then Re Ma. Good luck at cracking that code. Richard Fitzentite. <laughs> <laughs> And we might be swingers, Carrie and D, Alex and Madison, and Mr. Brown, and then our very first cruise booking. Oh. Yeah. Special thank you to Dick from Louisiana. From one Dick to another. Thank you, Dick. We appreciate it. And last but not least, uh, we have to thank because we got a new shipment of Malibu strings. The bikini that even makes your sexy panties say, hey, why don't you bring it down enough? <laughs> All right, so make sure to follow us on all social media, including our secret Facebook page. Go to YouTube and subscribe, and then you can go outside and play. And that about does it for us. For more information, photos, or to contact us, go to room77podcast.com. Thanks for stopping by Room 77. We had a blast. Now get your clothes and get out.